This is Vicky, also known as Dragonfly7673. You're watching Dragonfly Soars. I'm recording this on Tuesday, March 10th, and it's about 7 p.m. Um, and I will warn you already, there is a Tigger here <laughs> who has been pesty since the second he saw me put the iPad in place. Before that, he was ignoring me mostly. Actually, they were a little mad at me today because a stranger came to the house. Um, I came home on Sunday and the furnace was making a god-awful noise, so I turned it off. Um, and I've kept it off for the last couple days until somebody could look at it and uh, turned out the motor needed to be replaced. I also know that several people in our condo have um, replaced their furnaces because the motor goes and then the heat exchanger goes and then you might as well have bought a new furnace because all of the furnaces are from the time the building was built. So I just decided to go with a new furnace. So I will get a new furnace on Monday. Right now he just installed a new motor so that I can um, have quiet heat. So and I was a little it's a little funky because in order to make sure that I'm actually going to get the furnace installation because I have one of their parts right now um, I had to pay for today and put a down payment on the installation so I had to put a whopping amount of cash down today but on the plus side um, my uh, tax refund is going to cover the new furnace so it'll be a nice break even um, but anyway, <laughs> I will, on Sunday, I, we, I stayed with best friend this weekend, and, um, I had a headache since Friday. Friday, I was looking at spreadsheets all day, and even though I was getting up and moving around and doing something else, and it still gave me a, a whopper of a headache, and spreadsheets do it to me every time, um, but it just kept going and it was I had a headache all day Saturday and Sunday my headache turned into a full-blown migraine and we already had bought tickets to see the 3d version of Jupiter ascending and so we went to the movie and I was doing okay I was like okay my headaches it was a little better I had put a heat pack on um, best friend had massaged my neck I had taken ibuprofen um, I didn't have any excedrin at his house. And I was like, okay, we'll get through the movie, it'll be fine. Until they had this big spaceship battle scene flying over the city of Chicago and the the lights and the movement and the noise all together, boom. Migraine bad. And uh it was probably one of the worst ones I have ever had. Um, and so, and then we, after the movie, we were going to the Apple store because his phone has been doing something weird and we just haven't had time to go. And the Apple store is right across from the movie theater. So I was like, okay, let's just go. Well, it turned out it was a while wait. Um, they estimated 20 minutes and I think it probably was maybe 25 minutes. I mean, it wasn't outrageous. It was just when you have a headache, it was just long. And then we, they ended up doing a full restore on his phone. And then we had to wait for all of his apps to be restored. Now, technically, you can go home and do that on your own Wi-Fi. But his Wi-Fi sucks. And he wasn't coming to my house. He, he was going to his house on Sunday. We were actually were going to go to the movie and then split. And I stayed put because he doesn't really like being there. <laughs> so I was kind of keeping him company. And um, Once all his apps were loaded, which took a while, even on their Wi-Fi, even their Wi-Fi was pretty good, um, we stopped when it started downloading songs. And we uh, turned off the iStore, iTunes store so it wouldn't use data. 
and uh, because otherwise songs will download on your data plan and even though uh, Tiff and Best Friend and I share a data plan and we never go over it still would have been a lot I figured it out and it would have been like two gigs just for music <coughs> we don't want to do that but the, so then he took me to get a Cinnabon um, then my boss later the next day said you know the cinnamon probably wasn't good for your migraine and I'm like oh she's probably right but I'm not sure it made it any worse either but um, I drove home with the sun that was not fun to get home all I wanted to do was get home and take some Excedrin and lie down for a little bit so I get home and the garage door won't close now it had that earlier in the week the sensors had been knocked and I was thinking great it's still broken and later it occurred to me that the sun was hitting the sensors at just the right angle that it won't shut but anyway I got the garage door closed um, if you hold the button it'll go anyway um, but and I sure enough later it was it works just fine it was just the angle of the sun and then today the same thing happened at about the same time but anyway uh didn't uh so garage door didn't shut get two steps into the house there's a giant thing of cat barf because of, you know apparently they were mad at me for leaving them okay and then it was like what is that weird smell apparently I had missed some of the dirty dishes when I had done dishes last and now they had been sitting which was totally my fault there was nobody I don't even know what I was thinking I was thinking I wanted to leave and uh okay and then all of a sudden the furnace kicks in and makes that god awful noise and it was just like oh my god oh well, and actually best friend called to complain that his songs weren't downloading and it turned out he just needed to wait a little bit and then it kicked in but in the meantime he's complaining his songs weren't aren't loading and all of a sudden I hear this god awful noise coming from the furnace and he's going what noise and I'm like there's no noise I'm not doing anything I'm like it's not you it's the furnace and I kind of laid into him because I was at that point all I wanted to do was get rid of my headache so anyway Sunday kind of sucked <laughs> but I laid down for a little while took like a short nap and then the furnace kicked on and made the god awful noise again because I had thought well maybe I could maybe it just needed a new filter so I replaced the filter so I got done fell asleep for maybe five minutes and the furnace kicked in okay Fell asleep for another 10 minutes and something else woke me up. Fell asleep for another 5 minutes and I had to go to the bathroom. And that, at that point I gave up and my head was still pounding. And I actually was seriously considering going to the emergency room at that point because it was so bad. But I, I didn't want to drive. And so I looked up online and found out that usually for a one-time thing, the emergency room will frequently give you hydrocodone to take care of a migraine and I went we have some of that I have some of that from something I had a while back plus best friends is here because neither one of us take a lot of pain medicine so we didn't we got it so I'm like you know what I will take a hydrocodone and if I don't feel better in a couple hours I will take my children in the emergency room and tell them I tried well within one hour I could see again and then it got, gradually got better and then it was fine and then and I was worried it would come back in the night but it didn't and I'm fine now so I don't know what was causing it but it's all gone I haven't had and I think it was just one thing after another I think it started with the spreadsheets and then it, I was mattress stitching on Saturday and so you're kind of at a funny angle and I think it was just one thing after another and it piled up until that final flashlight 3d movement thing now, in all this time, I did actually do some stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> while we were at the movies, I did work on my twitchy sock. Now, for anybody that's new, and I, if you're new, I apologize that I just rambled on about my horrible headache Sunday. I don't normally do that, or at least I try not to do it all at the front of the podcast. But it was such a big portion of how I felt and what was going on and needing the furnace replaced which also leads into I worked from home today because the furnace guy was coming um, it was such a big part of what happened that I felt like I needed to tell you but um, I did take my twitchy socks to the movies now twitchy socks are socks that I 
carry around with me, and they usually get ta get only knit on at the movies or in waiting rooms or anything where I need to sit still because I don't sit still very well. And best friend complains that I get twitchy if I don't have something to do. So therefore, any socks I carry in my purse that are plain stockinette are called twitchy socks in my world. So this is the twitchy sock. Now, I told you guys I worked on it when I saw Paddington a couple weeks ago, um, but I didn't have it to show you. So uh, before Paddington started, I was in this dark pink stripe, and I believe that's the last time you guys saw it. And then during Paddington, I got one full color repeat, so light pink, purple, dark pink. Um, I did that during Paddington. And then during um, Jupiter Ascending the Sunday, I did the light pink and the purple. Um, I actually had to put it down because my head was hurting so bad, so I didn't get as far. And I, I actually, uh, normally I do really well in the movies, but at one point I really had to go to the bathroom. And there's an app called Run P. And it tells you kind of good spots to go to the bathroom and what's going to happen while you're missing it. And so we always kind of look at the clues and it'll say something like, um, in this case it said the guy will say, can I kill him now? And she'll say, no, just take me home. And that marked a um, good time to go to the bathroom. So we heard that and I was like, oh, I gotta go. And I dropped my knitting. Well, I had only done a couple stitches on that row three stitches actually and when I dropped it and then I stuffed it in my purse later because I never actually picked it back up um, I actually had dropped those stitches and they had run so I had to fix it um, it looks fine now so but that was a little unnerving when I realized it. it was like oh and I realized it in the theater right when we were leaving and I was trying to like at least rescue enough of the stitches so it wouldn't run any further um, so that was also before we even went to the Apple store. So, but anyway, so the, since the last time you saw it, it's grown this much. Um, and I just show it to you periodically. The, and they're in no hurry to get done. This is the second sock. The first one is already done. It's downstairs somewhere. So I don't have it to compare right now, but I know I'm nowhere even close to finished. So. Um, I don't have a picture of that because, well, it looks pretty much the same. It's a striped sock. I do have pictures of my K Facet afghan for the additional work I did Friday and Saturday. So I will post those here and then talk about it. All right, so I got two seams done uh, on Friday and Saturday. On Friday night, I actually only got part of a seam done because, again, that was when my headache started and I just didn't feel up to it. Uh, plus, I got to best friend's house kind of late. So I worked on it, but I didn't finish. And when he got home, I was like, I'm tired. I don't feel good. And we went straight to bed. And normally, normally we wouldn't on a Friday night. Well, and... um. But what I did is there were nine strips total, and so I was sewing them in pairs. So last week I showed you that I had three pairs done, and then that left me three plain strips. Well, now I uh, did a pair there and connected the last strip, so I have that last section of three done. Um, in my head, I was thinking I had two to do that weekend, and then I would have two more. The reason is because when I was sitting on the couch and looking at the rest of the blanket, I could see two spaces. And I was like, okay, and then when I finish this, I next time I'm here, I can do those two, and I'll be done. Well, I, and then as soon as as soon as soon I finished sewing those, those three strips together and I went to lay it down next to the blanket to take the picture, all of a sudden a new space occurred magically because, of course, there's actually three seams left. But anyway, um, I might get one seam done this weekend, maybe. Um, Friday night I'm going to best friend's house 
uh, because Saturday we are going to go see mom and my son. Um, so I might get one done Friday night. They are still taking forever. Um, the headache didn't help. That made it even longer. But really, I by the time I do the seams and then clean up the corners and everything and weave in all the ends, it's easily taken me three hours to, to do one of those seams. So, so I have about three hours, so I have about nine hours left, um, give or take. And then I still have to put the border on the outside. So I figure I'll probably get one done this weekend, and then maybe two done the next weekend. And that would at least put it together into one solid blanket, and then it would just be the border. So that's where that is. I, I actually, I'm... I am kind of glad it's at his house because then I feel like I can get through a piece but I don't feel like it's staring at me and I have to work on it and make it a priority because it's at his house so if I'm not at his house it's not really a problem. Um, now since I was doing that I got behind on my mystery crochet afghan being put on by Yarnspirations and uh, the crochet crowd so Last week was clue four, and I have all 20 squares of the first afghan done for clue four. I only have five squares done of the second one. Now, if I hadn't been seaming, or if the seaming wasn't taking me so long, and actually even the crocheting was taking me longer than usual because of the headache this weekend, and of course on Sunday I did almost nothing because um, of the headache, until... <laughs> Sunday night, late Sunday night, I was feeling better. And so I was like, oh, I can get through a bunch of my squares. And I was like, okay. And I ended up going, I had like one square left when I normally would have gone to bed. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to power through and get this last square done. And I got it done. And I was, you know, all proud of myself. It wasn't, it wasn't too late. It was like 1035. I'm like, okay, I'll get ready for bed. And best friend had stopped answering his text messages. And I was like, why did he stop all of a sudden? And then all of a sudden it dawned on me that the time on my phone said it was 11.35. Not 10.35 like the clock that I was looking at on the wall because it was a clock I had forgotten to change. Because when I got home, I totally didn't think about changing, going around and changing the clocks because I didn't feel good. So it was actually much later, and then it was past midnight by the time I actually uh, went to bed because I still needed to get ready for bed, and, you know, it was what it was. I was so mad because I was like, I was so proud of myself for getting it done and still being going to bed early, and then nope, nope, that wasn't the case. And the reason he wasn't answering my text messages is because on the iPhone you can set a time period where you don't want to be disturbed, you don't want it to light up, you don't want it to make sound. And 11.30, I believe, is his cutoff. And since it was 11.35, that's why he had stopped answering me. And he actually, he was trying to figure out why suddenly I stopped texting him, and he thought, well, maybe I just went to bed. And all of a sudden in the morning, he got all of them all at once, and he's like, oh, that explains it. Um, he was up later anyway because he was uh, working and talking to our friend Allison, who was also a knitter. There, see, I brought it back. <laughs> um, Allison is someone I met through knitting, but she's a huge, she's a Cardinals fan, and she's a huge baseball fan. And a few years ago when we went to St. Louis, she helped kind of, when she knew where we were staying, she helped map out kind of what were the restaurants and things nearby, um, uh, nearby that we could uh, go to and um, you know that we're within walking distance of the hotel and then we met her for dinner well because she's also a baseball fan she and Eric really hit it off and she's actually presenting at a big um, conference conference symposium something like that this weekend but anyway she got us tickets for the St. Louis Star Wars, St. Louis Cardinals Star Wars theme night baseball game in July. And then she mentioned that uh, Gen Con 
in Indianapolis starts the next day, and she's actually driving from St. Louis to Indianapolis for Gen Con and asked if we want to go with because she and my friend Jenny from my knit group are going, and they're staying at her uncle's house, and he has plenty of room, and we are more than welcome to come with. And suddenly it was like, oh, yeah, we could do that. So now we're going to the Cardinals game and Gen Con during our vacation, <laughs> which actually is really kind of cool. So, and best friend is over the moon. All right, squares. I promise I'm bringing... I wasn't planning on recording tonight, and I feel like I've been telling you guys that more often lately. Um, my son and I were supposed to do homework tonight, and then I thought tomorrow night he would want the time off, and I would record that. And then he switched it up on me again, and uh, which was fine, but then I was like, oh, well, if we're going to do homework tomorrow night, and it's a long story, but tomorrow's a grocery shopping night, which means he goes to work with my mom, and while she's working, he does homework with me, because the store has Wi-Fi, and then they go grocery shopping in the evening. And uh, we actually get a lot of work done on those nights, because he has nothing else to do. There's no Xbox or anything. So, so they're actually really good homework nights. So he asked if we can swap it out, because he wanted to spend time with his best friend tonight, and then we could do more work tomorrow. So which is fine, but it also means I'm a little discombobulated. All right, so Afghan squares. Um, I'm going to show, put pictures here, partially because I need to go get something. Of course, while I was up, Mr. Tiggers stole my spot. Um, I was going to show you the squares for clue four, last week's clue, and realized that I actually brought over an unfinished one. Um, this is still at clue three. These are the ones I showed you last week um, that I actually talked about last week. So, clue four, which last week I showed clue four, but I didn't talk about it so you had a chance to look away. Well now I'll talk about it. Um, clue 4 added this border around the edge in the same color that we started with. So basically it looks like we created a big granny square and then added all this other stuff woven in. So it's kind of a cool effect. I like that piece because I was feeling with this, like the contrast colors were kind of taking over, and this kind of brought it back, um, kind of brought it back into balance, I think. So, this was my last week's clue for uh, my Afghan number two, and this is the one for Afghan number one. Um, you'll notice in the picture that I showed, the stacks are, of course, the one stack is high because I finished all 20 of them and the other stack is little because I only finished five of them. On the plus side, this week's clue, clue number five, is a much faster clue. So there's been a lot of people talking on Facebook that this will be the one where they get a chance to catch up. Um, if you don't want to be spoiled, look away because I'm going to show clue number five that came out today. You look away. All right. Clue number five adds this. Here's my one for the other Afghan. Right there. And now I'm going to post close up pictures of these. So if you don't want to be spoiled, keep looking away. All right, um, I will say this clue has generated a bunch of discussion um, about what is coming next. Now, next week, we are getting two clues, but
but then we skip a week. I don't know why. I don't know if the two clues are so intertwined that they decided to release them together. Um, I was talking to Heather today, um, to Nandy, and she was saying, well, maybe they use the same color, and this way it makes it easier for people to, you know, move forward without changing color. My first thought was that for some reason, um, the people in charge needed the 24th off, and so they decided to do two clues at once and then skip a week so we'd at least stay on track. But I really have no idea. <laughs> but anyway, next week we get two clues. So, I still am really enjoying this. Um, there are some people who don't necessarily like where it's going or whatever. I mean, it's a mystery. That's what we signed up for. You know, and people are like, well, I, you know, I really wish I could plan for my color placement. If you were planning for your color placement, it would no longer be a mystery. So, I, I will say I was a tad concerned with my colors today when I saw where it was going. Um, or where I thought it was going. But uh, Mikey posted something that made me feel better about the situation. <laughs> so, um, if you want to know what that was, I can tell you offline. <laughs> or I will tell you next week. Um, Alright, so that is the squares. I am going to be catching up slowly. I'll do some more tonight. Actually, the outside border from last week is taking me about 15-20 minutes. And part of that's because I get distracted. If on Sunday when I was feeling uh, better, I was actually flying through them pretty good. But then yesterday, yesterday and today, I was back to being slow. But whatever. <laughs> um, because I'm seeing Mom this weekend, I will get my yarn for the Sophie's Universe. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to start it right away. I was just reminded that for Natopia, and I knew this, but I had sort of put it out of my head, there is a swap at Natopia. And I wasn't remembering that part of the swap is a handmade object on the... I had forgotten that part. I was just thinking, buy stuff and put it in a bag and be all good. So I hadn't made plans for the make something part. I think I know what I want to do. I don't know if the person watches the podcast. So I'm not going to say it or show it until after Natopia, but I do have to make time for it. Um, but I think I know what I want to do. I have to try it out. Um, it, I can say this part. It uses Tunisian crochet in a way I haven't, I haven't done a lot of Tunisian crochet anyway, and it uses it in a way that I have not done it. So I am probably going to practice with some, uh, acrylic yarn before I commit to it in the yarn I want to use. So, um, speaking of Natopia, as of today, there are three openings for the first weekend of Natopia. Now, the way it's set up is it's, it goes one weekend, and then a second weekend, and the piece in between. And those are three different pieces of that you can purchase. I mean, people, some, some stay for the entire thing. I am only going to be there the first weekend. Now, and it turns out the first weekend has three openings. Apparently there were um, uh, several uh, drops for whatever reason. So if you are interested, it is in Lexington, Michigan, which is right on Lake Huron. So if you have a way to get there and you're interested, talk to Tina, who is Blooming Knitter on Ravelry. Um, she's the host of the Knitting Bloomers podcast. I really like this retreat. Um, so, if you're interested, you know, or contact me if you want to know more about it before you make that kind of commitment. That's fine. The, I wanted to show you a couple, like, well, first let me talk about the, uh, I want to make sure I covered all the first stuff, and then we'll do what do you want me to share. There's something different this week. Squares. Yeah, okay. 
Sarah, who is also known as Rain Lover. Um, she used to have the Rain Lover Knits podcast, and then she went on hiatus for a while, and then she came back with uh, the Raindrop Knits podcast, I believe. It's only on YouTube, so I sometimes catch it, because sometimes I'll put YouTube on um, when I'm at work, if I'm doing something that's that's mindless enough that I can, but that doesn't happen very often. So I haven't seen all of her episodes. I definitely haven't seen the last couple. But she sent me a message on Ravelry. Um, and I also know her. I've met her several times. The first time I went to Stitches Midwest, she saw me across the room and she came running up and gave me a big hug. And so she's one I really like her. So, and then we've seen each other at Stitches and Retreats. And so she wanted me to share um, about a virtual 5K that she is trying to sponsor. It is called the Wooly Trot 5K. And it's virtual because the there's no place to go for the 5K. What happens is there's a week in May, um, week 24 through the 30th. And during that week, you can do your 5K anywhere you want and then post your results. And then the winners will not be drawn by speed. They will be drawn randomly. But it's just something fun because there are so many things. Everybody's so busy. And this way you can do it on your own and you can do your own thing. So what she has is participants have one week to complete their run or walk because you can walk also run or walk and submit their time and that week will be May 24th to May 30th. There are no prizes based on speed of times. Prizes will be given by random number generator to those people who submit their times. Now this is based on a funding site. It's an Indiegogo site and she's trying to raise at least two thousand dollars to be able to host this. Um, and it's a fixed funding. So if she doesn't reach two thousand this won't happen. Um, but on that site, you can either do, there's a there's a $5, I want an entry fee, that's it, no swag option. Um, it does, it comes, it, it lets you enter, and it she is going to be sending a um, 5K uh, walk or run program, like a, five, like a couch to 5K. I don't know what one she's going to send, but she's going to be emailing that. But there are uh, t-shirts and drawstring backpacks that have this really, really cute little sheep on them. Let me see if I can bring it up. I actually, and you can also donate extra if you want. I uh, did the drawstring backpack. And if you do, if you get the t-shirt or the backpack or the t-shirt backpack or metal or whatever combination you do, everything gets you an entry um, into it. But like I said, there's the option to do just the uh, entry. Oh no. It is showing me the, um, oh, there it is. I don't know how well this is work. It's showing me the little sheep. Um, it's a little trotting sheep. Anyway, so there are t-shirts and backpacks and everything gets you an entry. I'm looking right now and she is, uh, she's not halfway yet. So please go ahead um, if you want to participate. It sounds like fun. And Tina was posting that she is going to do it and she thought it would be fun for people from her group to do it too. So. And I need, uh, I've been walking more, and once, now that uh, my son is off of his show choir schedule, he and I were talking about having a more regular schedule for homework, which means then I can also add back in uh, more exercise. Now I've been walking because I do, well, all my employee one on ones are walking based on our track at work. So I usually get, um, at least three or four times a week, I get about an hour of walking on each of those days. So, and, and I've got some employees that 
book. <laughs> so I mean, a couple. I mean, they just go. So, um, so I did want to talk to you about the Wooly Trot, and I will post all the links. Um, Sarah didn't know about the uh, what do you want me to share about thread, but I just added it in there because it was it seemed uh, like the perfect thing to put there. One thing I did on the what do you want me to share thread, if you go look, every time I've actually discussed a topic, I have now added in the link for what episode I answered that question in, because sometimes it's not obvious otherwise. So now if there's anything that somebody in the future wants to go and say, well, what did she answer to, what kind of superpower would you like? You can go and click on the on the link, and it'll take you to the Ravelry thread that has that episode in it. Uh, I want to see if there's anything more I need to tell you. She said, why a virtual 5K? One of the best reasons for this is that the great knitting community online, there are tons of folks all over the world who couldn't possibly be able to go get into one place to do a 5K together. This virtual way lets them all participate. People's schedules can also be all over the place, so allowing people one week to get their run in whenever they can um, lets them work out at their own pace or meet up with someone local if they want to. And not to mention weather. So this way, um, whether you do gym or outdoors, most people should be able to fit it in sometime during that week. Uh, Prize list will be on Ravelry and the website for the event if the funding goals are met. Um, prizes will be accepted. Um, so she she doesn't, and she's still working on that. There were also, um, there were participant items. There were also sponsorship items. If you would like to just sponsor the race, but you don't want to actually, um, uh, participate in it. That was also a set of options. Um, I'm trying to look. The sponsorship option, one of them puts your company name on the back of the t-shirts. Um, and another one lets you put your company logo on the t-shirt. Yeah, those are the two. There's two sponsorship items. They, both of them are, you're a sponsor, you're providing money to the um, to the race and your name will go on the back of the t-shirt so I think that's that's everything about the woolly trot 5k I will post more information and basically it's just for fun and the money is going to go to being able to set up the website and do the prizes and the shipping and all that kind of fun stuff hi Mr. Tigers I also saw today that the Yarn Harlot um, did a blog post. Well, she did a blog post about socks. <laughs> but then she also said at the end that her friend, Ken, who she talks about all the time, who is the reason we have the Yarn Harlot, because one day he got tired of hearing her talk about knitting, so she says. And so he gave her a blog for her birthday or Christmas or something like that. Anyway, he is doing... A bike ride for AIDS called Life Cycle, and he um, is raising money. But she said, being an introvert, he's struggling a little bit. So I followed her link and donated a little bit to his cause because he seems like a nice guy. Um, there are no prizes or anything attached to that. It's just if you feel like it. So I will post the link to that too. Um, that is everything for me. I was, oh, my new glasses chain. <laughs> so I have a terrible habit of leaving my glasses everywhere. In fact, I've been wearing these green glasses because I can't find my main pair of glasses. They are somewhere. Best friends looked, I've looked, we have no idea what I did with them. And he'll periodically go, how can you just lose your glasses? Well, it's because I don't need them. I need them for distance. Um, but most things I do, reading, working on a computer, knitting, crocheting, everything is right here. My vision is perfect right here. I, the doctor said that if I was 
anyone else, I'd be using bifocals right now, but it doesn't really make sense to use bifocals when your vision is perfect right here. I mean, you just be, you know, having plain glass. Why add that level of distortion? So I'm constantly taking my glasses off because they are actually a hindrance to the majority of things I do. So I leave them all over the place. I stick them in my hair and then the nose pieces get caught in my hair. Um, I, my purple set doesn't have nose pieces like this. They're plastic. So then I'll stick them in my hair. They actually just fall right off my head. I'm losing them all the time. And my boss, funny woman that she is, <laughs> decided that one day when she and I went to uh, Canada last year, she realized how much I lose my glasses. And when we were back at work, she brought me the ugliest ugliest granny chain she could find and she knew it. she just had this big grin on her face she knew it was god awful and that I wasn't going to use it but anyway and I don't like granny chains because oh the old-fashioned ones that hook to your earpieces Tiggy you are messing up the iPad move it keeps whacking things and it goes crooked sorry um, the ones the old-fashioned ones have a chain well, I can see the chain. I can, if I push it back, I can feel the chain. Um, your glasses hang like this. I just, I don't like it. Um, but there's a, there's actually a fancy company called The Loop that makes necklaces that have a circle on them. They are really, really expensive. Um, but for a while, they were the only one like that, and. I found this on Etsy, and this is from, I'm pulling out the little card that came with, Maitri, Maitri Studio, and she has beautiful lanyards for glasses. So when I'm wearing it normally, like just this, it just looks like a really pretty necklace. Um, this one in particular just looked really classy. Uh, best friend helped me pick it out because I just was going to buy one. Now, that being said, if it, uh, well, as I find it functional, I may buy other ones and actually use them as accessories. But for right now, I wanted one that would do most duty. So this was the one that he picked out. So, but then you just put your glasses on like this and they just lay against you. I also like the length on this because I can put it over my head and the um, the glasses are hanging low enough they're not going to whack against my desk at work. So I have two pictures here of of my chest <laughs> of the necklace. Alright, so I've only had it a couple days. So far I like it. I haven't actually worn it to work yet. So I will let you know next week how that goes. Um, because I didn't... I... Actually, you know what? I only got it out of the mailbox yesterday. So I only have used it last night and today. And today here at home it worked really well. Um, I will wear it to work this week and see how it goes. But so far I like the concept. And I think it's really beautiful. So... I will post that in the show notes. And I realize it's not knitting related, but I figured I can't be the only one that loses their glasses all the time. And the last thing I wanted to tell you was um, Mom finished another doll. She is calling it the Gold Rush doll. This one in particular is kind of neat because she couldn't find everything all in the correct color. So there is a great deal of it that she actually died with tea and something. I know right now she's talking to the screen saying the other item. She died she died the lace and trim using oh yeah tea and onion skins. So because she wanted to get just the right color. So that one has taken her a little while and I think it's really pretty, so I will post those pictures here at the end, and 
that will be the last thing. And I will see you guys all next time. Once again, I'll put this skit together tonight, but I will upload it tomorrow at work. And I will see you guys all next time. Bye now.